but let's just update you on something else that's coming through, and that is that the senior manager in charge of nursing, uh, when Lucy Letby uh, undertook these murders and seriously injured the babies, has now been suspended. Alison Kelly and other managers at the Countess of Chester Hospital uh, being accused, of course, in the evidence at court of ignoring warnings. This is from the consultants who gave evidence. Um, she is now nursing director of the Northern Care Alliance, but has since been suspended in light of information that emerged during the trial, uh, that from the National Health Service. As we've been saying, Lucy Letby refused to attend court today for sentencing. Zara Alina's killer, Jordan McSweeney, you might remember that case. Well, he also refused to attend court. And we can now speak to Zara's aunt, Farah, now. Good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us on GB News. Fully appreciate. This must be a very, very difficult day for you as well. What are your thoughts on today's events, primarily the fact that Letby refused to appear in the dock, just like Zara's killer? I think <clears throat> I think the, the the important question to ask is is why offenders are doing this and 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 why this is becoming a trend. Um, is it uh, because they're too distressed, um, or is it because they know they can get away with not attending um, their sentencing? And I think if it's the latter, then really you know something needs to change, doesn't it? Because facing your sentencing is the moment that you're held accountable, it's the moment that you face the judgment. And I think we all agree that it would be um, ideal for offenders to stand in the dock and face their judgment, both for the victims, um, for the families, for the person themselves, and for society, because we all know that justice has to be seen to be done in order to to, to feel that it is being done. And, and, and for us, certainly, when there was just this empty space in the courtroom, it, it made our victim impact statements feel pointless. They were, where, where were they landing? The, the judge had already read our victim impact statements. The, was it for the press? It was supposed to be for the offender. And for the offender to hear the impact, whether they listen or not, is another is another story. And maybe they, they don't listen. But as victims, we need to feel that that the process includes us in order for us to be able to um, feel some sense of retribution. Yeah, uh, the, the government says it's, it's, it's looking at this urgently. They have got yes. the victims and, and prisoners bill going through Parliament at the moment. But you'll know that the counter argument is that it could be as upsetting or disruptive if you have someone who's physically refusing to come into the dock or then makes a, 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 a noise and, and tries to disrupt the court proceedings, even if they are made physically to attend. I totally understand that counter argument. This this loophole was created so uh, in, in 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 you know historically, when felons refused to attend the courtroom, the process was slowed down. So this and then as a, as the process is slowed down, it's much it's harmful for victims. So it was create this loophole was in fact created to serve victims. So I totally understand that, and I think it's important that we don't go back. To, yeah. to, to that, but um, and neither do we have to force offenders into the courtroom. Who's saying that we have to use brute force? We use the language that they understand, and that is okay. Um, of course, this wouldn't work in the case of Letby, yes. but um, certainly in our case, um, if he, he, he on his minimum tariff, yeah. he got five years taken off because he pleaded guilty. Yes. Well, all that had to be said to him was, right, that five years goes back on. You don't yeah. attend, you behave badly, you get taken out, the five years goes back on. It's simple. Yeah. But, but also, we can use technology, can't we? And we can streamline... Well, I, I was going to um, ask you stream, about that. Yeah, because stream, we had Robert Buckland, the, the former Justice Secretary here on GB News on Friday, saying, look, the, the technology is there. You can beam all those witness statements, the judge's remarks, 
to the prison or the police holding cell and they are physically there and, and they have to watch and listen? Yes. And I, I, I think, why don't we use that technology? I suppose the, the, the questions are here is what are we doing this for? Why, why do we want offenders to face the judgment? And, and, and there's, a couple of, there's a couple of answers to that, possibly. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know for certain, but I've thought about this a lot. This is, of course, the most important factor uh, when you're a victim of murder. The most important factors are that they get caught, that they get punished, that society is kept safe from them. And, and that's what's really important. But this is important because... Victims get a sense of, I'm involved in the justice system. And we have to, as society, mem members of society, feel like we're being represented. Um, and if we're asked to give victim impact statements, we have to feel like they're going to land somewhere, even if, you know, on deaf ears, that, that they go somewhere. Um, but, but, but why would we be doing this? And I think the key thing here is, is that actually making um, offenders attend the courtroom is actually, it's a frightening thing for them to stand in front of a judge and to be judged. And maybe they feel a moment of shame in that. Well, if we don't do that, if we don't make that happen somehow, maybe what we're doing is we're removing a deterrent, an important de crime yeah, deterrent. Point. Yeah, yeah. And do you feel, when you look back, that there's still a hole there where you couldn't quite get closure. I mean, I'm not, I don't think you ever will get closure, yeah. will you? But there's a hole there because such an important part was missing when he didn't appear. It's, it is, there is a hole, but I, I don't really know for certain, you know, how the holes, how it all works out. Because the hole for us is that, you know, our Zara mm. was murdered and, and, and we'll never know why exactly, you know, what was going on in his mind, why he murdered her in the way that he did. And, and, and so there's always a gap. But as human beings, I think whenever somebody offends us, hurts us, damages us, just, you know, destroys one of ours that we love, we want to be able to face that person. We, as humans, we want to look at that person and say, you did this to me. And, and I think that that's a natural human yeah. uh, need. But, but maybe it can't be for all of us, you know, and, and, and we can only do the best here. Farah, thank you for taking the time to speak to us here uh, on GB News. And again, we know how difficult it is uh, for you to reflect on these, yeah. but thanks very much indeed for that.